But le let's switch gears quickly now and uh, talk about uh, some more uh, worrying case. Uh, let's switch gears and talk, look into the issue of the contract scandal rocking the Niger Delta Development Commission, the NDDC. Over the past few days, the NDDC has been enmeshed in a controversy of an alleged about five billion naira fraud involving the board and top management members of the agency over the alleged purchase of personal protective equipment, PPE, and sanitizers to tackle coronavirus in the nine states making up the, uh, the Niger Delta region. Also, there are allegations that in January 2020, the NDDC released the over four billion naira for the supply of Lassa fever equipment that were never delivered, according to reports. Let's speak with the man in charge of projects at the NDDC. I'm now being joined on the program from Abuja studio by Dr. Cairo Ojubo. Thank you so much, Dr. Ojubo, for joining us tonight. Uh, it's interesting that these allegations are coming, especially when the NDDC interim board is going through a forensic uh, report and investigation. Did the NDDC give a contract of over five billion or five billion? for PPEs? No, uh, the, uh, Sharon, thank you very much. There is uh, nothing like that. And uh, if you listen to the, if you read the statement of the commission, uh, the commission stated unequivocally that uh, uh, such a, a contract does not exist. The company they named also came out, uh, Signora or whatever their name is, to say, look, they didn't receive such contract and they didn't receive any payment. Uh, uh, to tell Nigerians the truth, you, you, you hit the nail at the head when you mention forensic audit. And that is what the problem of the uh, NDDC is. The major stakeholders, the contractors, and people who, who normally scam the, 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 the commission, they are totally against the forensic audit. And the moment that the uh, Interior Management Committee handed over the documents some three days ago uh, to the forensic auditors, uh, flagging off the proper uh, uh, forensic audit properly, heavens were let loose. And I, I, I will tell you what. The issue is that some persons who normally would gather money for elections, some persons who is their, who the NDDC is their, their backyard and their agriculture and their farm and their, and their fishing pond, they, they hate what the minister has ordered and what the minister is doing in the NDDC. Therefore, I will take five, point, five major points to portray my point. Take the headquarters building. When we came into office, it was 40% uh, 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 co completed. In six months, we have, in, we have made it 95%, even not for this COVID incident. If the, the, the headquarters building would have been commissioned by today. Normally, the commission pays 300 uh, million so that we can, uh, every year deal, as rent. So, apologies, sorry, Dr. Ojibo, so that we can deal with this matter uh, one after the other. And uh, if, if you can make your uh, answers uh, brief and straight to the point so that Nigerians can get what it means. Was there any contract yeah, yes. for COVID-19 intervention? Was there any? No, there, there, there's no such. What has happened is that the commission has written to the Honorable Minister to, uh, to, to allow the commission to intervene so that the commission can provide uh, equipment for, some, uh, for, for the hospitals in the Niger Delta region. And each of these uh, isolation centers that, the, that, 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 that should be uh, assisted uh, have been named and have been written to. And we, the, the minister has also written to the president, and the president has given his consent that this, the, the, the intervention to, should take place. By tomorrow, we will receive the formal approval from the president and the minister to enable us to intervene in these processes. And in that process, the, the, the centers that are to be assisted are, are spread over the nine states of the Niger Delta region. And that is yet that the, and that is where we are with the intervention we are talking about. All right. So, Dr. Ojubo, another no quick question is: Apologies, you said that there hasn't been, but uh, you talked about Sonora concepts, which you said does not exist in your books. Are you familiar with uh, the company Osmoserve? Are you familiar with it? Uh, no, no, I'm not familiar with that. But what I, what, what I'm familiar with is that there is a process ongoing that as soon as 
which we can announce to you as soon as we receive the, the, the approval from the Honorable Minister, we're able to address the public on, the, on, on what we are going to do. The, we, we state what has been approved for us. We cannot tell you what has, we cannot uh, uh, give you any value because for now, we have not seen the approval. Once we get the approval, then we will not tell you what our intervention is going to be. Anything okay, so, you hear is speculative. All right. The reason we are getting this attack, Shenwu, is this. One, like as I told you, the, 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 the minister has insisted that the headquarter building must be completed. And now it has been completed. People were screaming and screaming of the, 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 the commission because the River State government said they do not receive 300 million every year. That what they receive is 200 million. So somebody is going away with, with 100 million yearly. I, I, and I will tell you so. Normally what happens in the commission is that programs and projects, which are ghost programs, ghost training, they will 6 million, 10 million, and nobody hears of it. So what has happened is that the minister said, look, all such programs should stop. And we stopped it. So there is no more money going as for people to share. Okay, so Dr. Ojubo, another concern. So apologies. And, and keep, uh, share with if I don't... Sorry, 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 Dr. Let me Ojubo. Let to you what is going on. All right, because, you know, the issue is that uh, I try as much as possible for us to break it down, for people to clearly, this is television, and you need to break it down in pieces so that people can understand. So the other question is, Lassa fever. Did NDDC approve monies for Lassa fever a few months ago? The Lassa fever contract was issued and signed before we came into office. As at the time we came, there was last fever incident in Ondo and uh, Edo State. The governor of Ondo State asked for intervention. And then when we looked at the store, they were, of course, you can see the former MD where she went on herself to deliver these uh, uh, products. And when they got there, some of the drugs have already expired. And the contractor was asking for payment. And the contractor said, look, we will not allow you to distribute until you pay. So the commission, it was not our contract. It's not our company that approved it. It's not our, our this present uh, IMC that approved it. And it is a, a contract that we met on the ground. And the, the, the commission needed to assist the states at that time of the yellow fever incident that the governor of Ebony was just talking about some few minutes ago. And All that right. was what happened there. We, we know nothing. About, we only uh, concluded what we met on the ground. And that is that. Okay, doctor, uh, apologies. We need to take a break. But when we come back, we'll get some more explanations from Dr. Cairo Ojubo on allegations uh, next on the program, allegations of the COVID-19 contract scam, which rocks the NEDC tonight. We dig further and get some more perspective. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. On this stretch of the program, we've been talking about what has become a big allegations against the Ninja Delta Development Commission, NDDC, over a contract scandal. Tonight, we've been speaking with the director of projects at the Interim uh, Management Committee set up by the federal government to oversee uh, the NDDC. Dr. Cairo Ojibwe has been talking to us. For a moment, uh, Dr. Ojibwe, I have someone here who does not agree with what you're saying. Uh, is your brother here, uh, Mr. Ken Okolubo, uh, who is a public affairs analyst. Uh, thank you so much for coming on tonight. It's always my pleasure. You Shiro. were nodding in the negative when Dr. Ojibo yes. was talking. You have uh, any anything in the contrary? Why I was nodding in the negative is that I remember we were both in the studio in October, and I clearly said that the forensic audit that was uh, being proposed by the president wasn't going to see the light of the day with this interim management committee. And not because we don't believe in forensic audit, but because the interim management committee was an illegal contraption that has been put together just to get us to the situation we have found ourselves now. Now he says he's not aware of Signora. Sorry, when you say illegal, some people... It's an illegal contraption. Some, some people have yes. defended to say, look, no, the president has there are a four right... Court cases. There are four court cases, and it will be interesting to know what, how the court cases will end. But for the want of time, Signora, for example, has come up with a statement. They were paid on the 22nd of February for two contracts. One for the Lassa fever kit. But Signora the, said they did not. No, for the Lassa fever uh, kit okay. and for the maternal kits. 
the maternal kids were for 357 million. That was what they were paid for the same day, and they were paid 47 million for the last fever kids. Now, the interesting thing was that they awarded that contract to Signora. But now that their hands are in the cookie jar, they have come to deny. Why do I say this? Osmosev was also awarded a contract for 4 billion. 861 million 350 naira. And, and, yeah, and you are well. And they have been paid 55%. How are you? How did you get to know this? I got to know this because of the information that were released to us. We have been following the NDDC very closely because we have been very, very, very upset with this interim management committee. Why? Because they are not carrying out exactly the mandate which the president wanted them to are carry out. Are you one out. of those, Dr. Oduro said, is worried about... I, I, I'm not a contractor with NDDC. I've never done any government Do you contracts. have friends who are worried about the... No, I don't have friends. Right? We're exposing the fact that an interim management committee that should have been concerned with the forensic audit of companies like Signoria, companies like Os Osmosev, are rather concerning themselves with awarding those... awarding them a job and paying them. You know, in the interesting thing, Shenwu, is that when they were paying for the Lassa Fever kids, they broke them into 22 companies. 22 companies were paid 47 million, uh, 167,000 across the board on the same day. Why they did that is because that is not beyond the MD's approval of 50 million. Now, if you come as a board or if you come as a management team, what you are supposed to do is to stop all payments and start your investigation. Because those Lassa Fever kids were done in three lots. As at the time, Ondo had 108, 108, uh, uh, three cases, Edo had 108 cases. That was in January to February 2019. By the time they came on board, the cases had completely gone down to about six for Ondo and two for Edo. And so why were we having more lots for Lassa fever? That's what the Interim Management Committee should have asked itself. But they came in, in February 2020 to pay 22 companies for the same Lassa fever contracts that we are talking about. What am I saying? I'm saying that, look, this Interim Management Committee has completely lost is focused. Are, are you they saying should be completely that, disbanded. You, why? Be, because of... They what? have entrenched He's, themselves in contract awards. But, they have entrenched themselves in contract payment and have lost focus of what the president do, has are, asked them to are do. Are you saying they don't have the right to, to contract, the, I mean, to give those contracts well, out? That was not the mandate they came for. They came for forensic audits. But they are also... And, and this is six months also after this have been proved mandate. right. I said it on this studio. No, but that I, in six months there will be no forensic audits. Were they not asked also to manage... No. Nope. The what the minister told us was that this interim management committee came to clean the urgent table, not to put their hands in the cookie jar. So are you saying that uh, these, they are corrupt? Is that what you're saying? Oh, but th that is clearly what you have seen from all these evidences I've given you. All right. Let me allow... If he, if he denies that the Signora was not given any contract, why has he not? Why would he not deny Osmosev that has already been paid 55% of the contract sum? And don't forget that the Federal Executive Council approves contracts of more than 250 million naira. Let's, let's, Even uh, one second, 318 million that was approved for the forensic uh, uh, process was done on the 13th of February, and that was done by the Federal Executive Council. Dr. Ojibo, please, could you react to some of the allegations that have been raised, uh, perhaps part of some of the issues raised earlier uh, by Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Okolubo? Let me repeat. Signora has not been paid one penny for COVID-19 equipment or has any such uh, contract. Uh, whatever company he called, I don't even know what company he's talking about, has not received any 65% of any contract of such uh, nature. What I know and what I'm telling you is that the Honorable Minister has received approval from Mr. President for us to intercede and help in building isolation centers, in helping state governments within the nine zones, and their list are here. And all the centers are here and to help in everything we can to uh, make sure that we tackle the COVID incident. Now, what he is talking about is very unfortunate because I have told you that the, the problem of these people who are campaigning against the Interim Management Committee is that they are afraid of the forensic audit. The forensic audit has gone through the whole log. And in doing so, it has kicked off. And that is why they are running Hector Sketter, trying to stop what uh, uh, should, should be done. What they wanted us to do as an interim management committee is that when we come in, we will pay for the certain. The minister said, no, we shouldn't pay. And we have not paid. We have not awarded any contract. We have, since we came in, we haven't. But we have the right and the mandate to do so. They want us to also pay, we pay for uh, 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 emergency projects. But we insisted, the management insisted that I should personally inspect it. I'm sure you are aware of it. And until I inspect and 
we see that these contracts have been properly done, do, nobody pays. And if there is any defect, we ask the contractor to go back. And there is no EDP before my time that has gone to the field to do what I am doing today. We procured current equipment with which we call asphalt to know that the thickness is what the commission has recommended. We have found very many defective and the contractors have been asked to go back. And I will tell you this again, uh, uh, Sheung, there is a contract for, by, uh, given the, by the commission for two companies to collect revenue on behalf of the commission. The minister stopped it and they were getting one billion every month from this uh, uh, contract. Now, the people who were benefiting from this commission, if they would rather kill everybody than have that contract stopped. But the minister, being who he is, has insisted that this contract must stop, and the commission stopped it. And that is the fight you are saying. All right, Dr. So Ojibo, because... Uh, uh, we, 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 the fight for the soul and for the purse of the NDDC. And that man you see there, go and check his history. He was a member of uh, Desopadek. Desopadek is the equivalent of Delta State oil producing areas. Uh, uh, and look at him. Go and check his record from where he comes from. Go and check what he did as a commissioner. And that is why every time the interim uh, management and forensic is mentioned, he goes gaga. Because he knows that one well, day, just, and by just, the grace of God, we, we, we the government will come that we look into the affairs of, of the, uh, the sofa deck, and we shall see those who will be found wanting. And I promise you this, when I leave office, you will not find me wanting in any way. So, because Dr. Ojibo, just a moment, because we are in the, in the about, corridor of about, our uh, final minutes. So, the executive uh, uh, director projects. So, I am just a moment. To be the one who Dr. Ojibo, just a Go moment. Go and check if my name is on that paper. Dr. Ojibo, just a moment. I have my director telling me, and I have just about a minute or so. I'd like you to respond to what he said. Then I'll give uh, Dr. Ojibo a few seconds to round up. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't respond to any of the things I said. He, he merely beat, he, you know when you beat around the bush? I have brought a very silent fact. The interesting thing is that all these documents are with the EFCC. And uh, I wouldn't want to go further. I trust uh, the EFCC, they will do what is the need for this. This entire management committee has been one that has been enmeshed with series of scandal. Well, from what the findings the EFCC would, 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 would bring out to the general public, people will be ashamed of the fact that this group of people were those that they brought to come and carry out a forensic audit. He keeps casting as passion on the time I served in the Sopadek. If I had any skeletons in my cupboard, I wouldn't sit down here. I think my time in the Sopadek was one of the best time anybody has ever had. I stand to be corrected that I was one of the best commissioners in the super deck. And I think Dr. Emmanuel Ludwa, who is still my boss, who appointed me as a commissioner, who is a member of the APC, will tell you that he was very proud of me when I served in the super deck. All right. Dr. Ojibo, we have 30 seconds to go. Your final thought. 30 seconds, please. My, my, uh, thank you very much. Let me say this. The problem in NDDC is that one, the minister has stopped the areas where fonts were leaking. And this stoppage of these leakages that people used to go and share, the minister stopped it and the commission stopped it. And what they want, all those people campaigning against the MC, um, uh, 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 IMC, is that if, since we came on board, if we had given them the contract, given them everything and given them the opportunity to share money, they will be hailing us. Now it is not happening. And my God knows I have spoken the truth. When I leave office, you will see it. That's and he has, luckily he has mentioned the FCC. We are ready, and I can assure you that our records are telling. And Nigerians will celebrate uh, on, uh, uh, God's will at Pabio when they look into the affairs of NDDC after we have left office. And I will assure you that there is nothing you, that you will, that there's no way you will find us wanting because we know why we are there. Forensic audit brought us there. We have the full powers to do everything. Dr. We are out of contract, time. Make payment and all and all. But the money we met when we came into the NDDC is still intact. Dr. Ojubo, we have to go now because we are out of time. Dr. Ojubo, the money in NDDC covers is. Dr. Carol Ojubo, we are out of time. The director of projects at the NDDC in the interim management com uh, committee of the NDDC, Dr. Carol Ojubo from Abuja Studio there. Thank you so much for coming on. And it's always my pleasure. Mr. Ken Okogulugo, thank you so much for coming on. It's always on my pleasure. Thank you. But that's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Sean Wakimale. Enjoy the rest of your evening.